the settling and sedimentation. Settling is the process by which particulates settle to the bottom of a liquid and form a sediment. By gravity force, the particle will tend to fall to the bottom of the vessel, forming a slurry at the vessel base. Now, let's see how process sedimentation occur. At the beginning of a best sedimentation process, the solid is uniformly distributed. The total depth of a suspension is Z0. After a short while, the solid has settled to give a zone of clear liquid, zone A and zone D. Above zone D is a transition layer zone C, in which the solid content varies from that in the original pop to that in zone D. The depth of zone D and A increase as settling continue. The depth of zone C remains nearly constant and zone B decrease. As time goes by, only layer A and D can be observed. The settling process stops. The entire process as shown is called sedimentation. So how about the application of settling and sedimentation in our everyday life? This process is widely used in wastewater treatment where polluted water which contains slurry flows inside the tank. The solid particles will settle down at the base of the tank and create sludge. By time, clear water is formed at the top of the tank and eventually flows out of the tank. So this is the wastewater treatment in our everyday life. So, in this experiment, we have to achieve two objectives. First, we need to study the effect of height and concentration of the particles on settling rate. Second one, we need to study the effect of different volume of flocculants, which is aluminium oxide, on the settling rate. Now, we will proceed to the procedure of the experiment A. Experiment A objective is to study the effect different initial height and concentration on the settling rate. Before we start the experiment, we have to make sure all the cylinders are empty. To empty the cylinder, hold the top and the middle section of the glass cylinder and pull the cylinder carefully away from the back panel. Then, we have to prepare 5 different sets of cornstarch solutions. For the first cylinder, it contains 50 g of cornstarch in 2 liters of water with 90 cm high. For the second cylinder, it contains 100 g of cornstarch in 2 liters of water with 90 cm high. Then, the third cylinder contains 50 g of cornstarch in 2 liters of water with 60 cm high. For the fourth cylinder, it contains 100 gram of cornstarch in 2 liters of water with 60 cm high. Then the last cylinder, it contains 100 gram of cornstarch in 2 liters of water with 30 cm high. Next, we have to record initial time and wait for 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, we have to observe the height of the clear liquid interface and record the height for every 5 minutes. We have to record the height of the clear liquid interface until it reaches 1 hour. 
Lastly, do not forget to record and tabulate all the obtained data to evaluate your result at the end of your experiment. Now, we move on to the experiment B. The objective of experiment B is to study the effect different volume of flocculants on the settling rate. Like the experiment A, firstly we have to make sure the cylinders are empty. After that, prepare the flocculant by mixing 20 gram of aluminum oxide in 1 liter of water. Five different sets of cornstarch solution with different height and concentration, just like experiment A. For the first cylinder, it contains 50 gram with 90 cm height. Second cylinder, it contains 100 gram of cornstarch with 90 cm height. Then the third cylinder contains 50 gram of cornstarch with 60 cm height. And for the fourth, contain 100 gram of cornstarch with 60 cm height. And the last cylinder contain 100 gram of cornstarch with 30 cm height. Next, add 5 ml, 10 ml, 15 ml, 20 ml, and 25 ml of flocculin in each cylinder respectively. Then, we have to record the initial time and wait for 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, we need to observe the height of the clear liquid interface and record it for every 5 minutes. We will stop the recording after 1 hour. Lastly, do not forget to record and tabulate all the obtained data to evaluate your result at the end of your experiment. In this part of experiment, the different concentration and different initial height were used. Cylinder 1 is set to 90 cm with 50 g of corn flour. As for cylinder 2, the height set is at 90 cm and 100 g of corn flour. For cylinder 3 and 4, the height and mass of the corn flour used is at 60 cm 50 g and 60 cm 100 g respectively. Based on the table shown, we can conclude that as the time increase, the height of the clear layer for all five cylinder increase as well. However, for cylinder 1 and cylinder 3, it reaches the highest amount which is 3.3 cm and 3.1 cm respectively. Followed by cylinder 2 and cylinder 4 with the same amount of 2.5 cm and lastly, cylinder 5 with 2.1 cm of clear layer. From the result obtained, we plot a graph of height against time. Based on the graph, we can observe that the cylinder 1 and cylinder 3 have faster rate of settling in the time of 60 minutes. We can also see that cylinder 5 takes the longest time as the height is much shorter. As for cylinder 2 and cylinder 4, the settling rate is in between the cylinder 1 cylinder 2 and cylinder 5. For cylinder 1 and 3, it reaches a uniform settling velocity after 15 minutes. So, in general, cylinder 2, cylinder 4 and cylinder 5 has higher concentration of 100 gram which hinders settling. The reason behind this is because the gravitational force exert on this solution is lower. This complies with the deduction that settling rates increase as the concentration of solution increase. This is due to the particle interaction in the solution that occurs. In higher concentration, the particles are close and compact, which causes inhibitance and prevent the particles from settling faster. As we can see from the result,
The settling velocity in each solution is not stable as the rate of settling seems not to be trend as theoretical. Moving on to experiment B, where settling rate for different volume of flocculants are determined. For this part, we use different volume of flocculants, which is aluminium oxide, in two different cylinders. The height of the solution in the column and also the concentration of corn flour is still the same as the first experiment. 5 ml of flocculants was added into the first cylinder and the amount of flocculants are increased 5 ml for every next cylinder. So, 10 ml is added into cylinder 2, 15 ml into cylinder 3, 20 into cylinder 4, and 25 ml into cylinder 5 respectively. The results obtained from experiment B with flocculants are then tabulated. As in the table above, we can observe on how the clear layer are formed in each cylinder. The results obtained from experiment B are then plotted into a graph of settling time versus height of clear layer formed. The difference between experiment B and experiment A is clear that with the addition of aluminium oxide as the flocculant, the particles form clumps which are much easier to settle than individually. The results obtained prove that aluminium oxide played its part as a flocculant in coagulating the particles. As observed in the graph, we can see that cylinder 1 and cylinder 3 still settles faster compared to cylinder 2, cylinder 4 and cylinder 5 as it has lower concentration of corn flour. Comparing the time taken for cylinder 3 and cylinder 1 to reach its uniform velocity at which it settles, we can observe that it takes much faster for it to reach its uniform settling velocity. As for cylinder 5, we can observe that in the beginning, the settling rate was initially uniform. It actually settles faster compared to cylinder 2 and cylinder 4. The simple reason behind this is because 25 ml of flocculant were added into cylinder 5, which is higher concentration compared to cylinder 1 until cylinder 4. Thus, the particles coagulate much faster, causing the water to be squeezed out in between the particles. As the coagulate settle, the water is forced upwards, forming the clear layer much quicker. Basically, Flocculants are being used as the substance which promote the clumping of particles. Flocculants are added into solution where the particles are not soluble. These solid particles are then attracted to the flocculants, forming a coagulate which is higher in mass and higher density. This allows the coagulate to settle down with its higher density. Thus, as the mass of precipitate increases, it has lower settling time.